Section 1 Introduction We're here to introduce our work that seeks to navigate the complexities and challenges in the field of natural language processing, NLP, especially with regard to large language models, LLMs. These LLMs have significantly transformed the NLP landscape with their exceptional abilities like emergent understanding and in-depth comprehension. Their vast size, with some models having a stunning 30 billion to 175 billion parameters, is a testament to their capabilities. However, it's this enormity that makes training these models a resource-intensive task, often requiring high-end GPU resources. This in turn, presents barriers to smaller institutions and companies that might not have access to such resources. In order to tackle this, parameter-efficient fine-tuning methods like LoRa and prefix tuning have been brought into play. They've made it possible to fine-tune LLMs even with limited resources. However, they don't provide a practical solution when it comes to fine-tuning all parameters, which is known to be a more effective approach. In light of this, our work focuses on finding techniques that allow full parameter fine-tuning, even in situations where resources are limited. We've delved into four aspects of memory usage in LLMs, namely activation, optimizer states, gradient tensor, and parameters. Through this, we've managed to optimize the training process in three ways. 1. We re-evaluated the role of an optimizer from an algorithmic perspective and found that the stochastic gradient descent SGD, method is an effective replacement for full parameter fine-tuning in LLMs. This discovery allowed us to eliminate the need for optimizer states, since SGD doesn't require any intermediate states. 2. Our proposed optimizer, named LOMO, effectively reduces the memory usage of gradient tensors to the same level as the largest gradient tensor. 3. We have also integrated gradient normalization, loss scaling, and transitioned some computations to full precision during training in order to stabilize mixed precision training with LOMO. This method results in memory usage that is only equal to the memory used by parameters plus activation and the largest gradient tensor. We've thus managed to significantly lower the memory usage needed for full parameter fine-tuning, bringing it down to the same level as the memory required for inference. We also made sure that our memory-saving techniques do not compromise the fine-tuning process. This was accomplished by ensuring that the process of updating parameters remained equivalent to that performed by SGD. We conducted empirical assessments of memory and throughput performance of LOMO and found that it enables the successful training of a 65 billion parameter model using just 8 RTX 3090 GPUs. Furthermore, we applied LOMO to tune all parameters of LLMs on the SuperGlue dataset collection. The empirical results demonstrate the efficiency and effectiveness of LOMO for optimizing LLMs with billions of parameters. In summary, our contributions are we have theoretically demonstrated that SGD can successfully fine-tune all parameters of LLMs. We believe that the issues which previously limited the use of SGD may no longer be significant obstacles for fine-tuning LLMs. We have developed a low memory optimization technique, or LOMO, that significantly reduces GPU memory usage without compromising the fine-tuning process. We have empirically validated the effectiveness of LOMO in optimizing LLMs in situations where resources are limited. We have further supported this through performance evaluations on downstream tasks. Section Summary The training of large language models, LLMs, with billions of parameters requires expensive GPU resources, making it difficult for small labs and companies to participate in this area of research. In this paper, the authors propose a technique called Low Memory Optimization, LOMO, that significantly saves GPU memory usage without compromising the fine-tuning process. They empirically validate the effectiveness of LOMO in optimizing LLMs under resource-constrained scenarios and demonstrate its efficiency and effectiveness for tuning the full parameters of LLMs on the SuperGlue dataset collection. Section 2 Related Work This segment discusses earlier research on techniques aimed at saving memory during the comprehensive fine-tuning of parameters. We can use these methods in conjunction with LOMO to further lessen memory usage. One such technique is activation checkpointing. In the standard backpropagation method, all activation values from the forward pass are kept in memory to calculate gradients. This can lead to considerable memory usage, particularly with larger language models. An alternative approach would be to discard all activations and recreate them as needed for gradient computation, thereby conserving memory. However, this could significantly increase the computation expense. That's where activation checkpointing, or gradient checkpointing, comes into play, balancing memory usage and computation costs. It operates by storing the activations of strategically chosen checkpoint nodes in the computational graph in memory after the forward pass, while the activations of other nodes are recomputed at most once. This means we can reduce the activation memory down to the square root of the initial quantity, albeit at the cost of an additional forward pass. 
Section Summary In the Related Work section, we explore memory-saving techniques for full-parameter fine-tuning, which can be combined with LOMO to further reduce memory consumption. One such technique is activation checkpointing, which strikes a balance between memory usage and computational cost by storing activations of selected checkpoint nodes in memory while recomputing the rest on demand. This can reduce activation memory to the square root of the original amount at the cost of one extra forward pass. Section. Mixed Precision Training. We're now diving into a technique known as mixed precision training. This method has gained popularity in training large language models because it speeds up the training process and decreases memory usage. How does it do that? It uses half-precision storage for parameters, activations, and gradients, which allows for faster computations during both forward and backward propagation. However, just speeding up the process isn't enough, we need to ensure that the model maintains its stability and accuracy. For this, we employ three strategies. First, we make use of full precision copies of weights. Second, we use something called loss scaling, which is essentially a technique to prevent small gradient values from becoming zeros due to limited precision. Lastly, we perform specific mathematical operations in full precision to avoid errors that might occur due to the reduced precision. Next, we'll touch on something known as a heterogeneous training system. Several studies have looked at ways to decrease the memory usage of GPUs, and this is where using a mix of different types of memory, such as CPU and NVMe memory, comes in. One strategy called L2L, or layer-to-layer, -layer, has a unique approach. It only transfers the tensors needed for the computation of a specific layer to the GPU memory, while keeping the remaining tensors in the CPU memory. This way, we're effectively making use of both types of memory. Then there's the zero offload technique, which builds upon ZERO2. This method stores the gradients and optimizer states in the CPU memory and updates parameters through CPU computation. The placement of tensors in computation operations, whether on GPUs or CPUs, is decided based on the data flow graph. Further advancements have led to zero infinity, a development over zero offload on ZERO3. This new technique allows even larger models to be trained. How? It allows model states and other tensors to be offloaded not just to CPU memory but also to NVMe memory, fully utilizing the potential of the heterogeneous architecture. Section Summary Mixed precision training is a popular method for training large language models as it speeds up training and reduces memory usage. To maintain accuracy, full precision copies of weights, loss scaling, and specific arithmetic operations are used. Heterogeneous training systems, such as L2L and Zero Offload, Reduce GPU memory consumption by transferring only necessary tensors to GPU memory and retaining the rest in CPU memory. Zero Infinity further scales model size by offloading partitioned model states in tensors to NVMe. Section 3 Method In our approach, we reassess the role of the optimizer in training large language models, LLMs. In contemporary systems, optimizers, such as Atom, require a substantial amount of memory, as they retain intermediate states that are twice the size of the model parameters. As the parameters increase in size, memory consumption becomes dominated by the optimizer states. In contrast, we propose the use of a simpler optimizer, namely Stochastic Gradient Descent, SGD, for fine-tuning LLMs. While it's true that Atom has been successful in training deep models, we hypothesize that we can achieve satisfactory results with SGD, a simpler and more memory-efficient optimizer. We make this hypothesis based on our observation that when we confine our focus to fine-tuning LLMs, the common challenges associated with SGD, such as dealing with high curvature loss surfaces, local optima, and saddle points, might not be as prominent. One significant aspect we've considered is that the loss surface of LLMs tends to be relatively smooth. This implies that even slight changes to the model parameters do not result in large fluctuations in the loss. Both empirical evidence and theoretical analyses support this observation. So, if we accept that larger models have smoother loss surfaces, we can conclude that high curvature of the loss surface, one of the primary challenges with SGD, isn't a significant issue for LLMs. However, this assumption applies only when we're fine-tuning LLMs for tasks that are similar to the tasks the models were pre-trained on, such as tasks based on natural language or code. For tasks unrelated to the pre-training, such as those with synthetic loss functions, we acknowledge that the high curvature problem might still be an issue. Section Summary the optimizer states in LLMs occupy a large part of the memory used for training, and as the size of parameters increases, the optimizer states become the dominant term of memory usage. Using SGD as a cheaper optimizer for fine-tuning LLMs is an acceptable solution when we limit the scope, 
as the parameter space of LLMs is quite smooth and small perturbations on the parameters will not change the loss too much. This means that the large curvature problem is not an issue when teaching LLMs natural language-based tasks. Section. Local optimum is good enough. The primary aim of refining language model algorithms is to adjust them to new tasks and areas without making substantial alterations to the model itself. As such, it's often the case that a locally optimal solution is sufficient. This is particularly so given the comparatively scarce training data, in relation to the pre-training data set, which makes it challenging to drive the model towards a globally optimal solution located far away from the initial parameters. Likewise, in most natural language processing tasks, the starting parameters of language learning models should ideally be situated in a sort of valley, or a low point in the error surface. If the model has been pre-trained on a variety of tasks, this becomes especially noticeable as there's a higher likelihood of encountering tasks that the model has already learned, and therefore is already adapted to. Saddle points. Points that are neither maximum nor minimum, but rather a mix of both depending on the direction you approach them, usually occur along high points in the error surface, which are relatively distant from these valleys or low points. Hence, if we maintain our model's parameters close to their pre-trained values, it's possible that we may avoid issues associated with these saddle points. Nevertheless, we cannot definitively assert that stochastic gradient descent, or SGD, is superior to other, more modern optimization techniques. Our approach is guided by the aim to establish an uncomplicated and pragmatic solution for fine-tuning language learning models, while simultaneously identifying and rectifying any weaknesses that might arise along the way. Section Summary when fine-tuning LLMs for new tasks, a local optimum is often sufficient due to limited training data. It is important to start in a valley to avoid saddle points, which typically appear on ridges and are far from valleys. While SGD is a common optimizer, there is no guarantee it is the best, and the goal is to create a practical solution for fine-tuning LLMs while identifying and improving its flaws. Section 3.1.2 Implicit Batch Size Let's delve deeper into the concept of implicit batch size to get a better understanding of the stability of fine-tuning large language models, LLMs, using the stochastic gradient descent, SGD, method. Consider the situation where we have a pre-trained model which we denote as F. This model has a set of parameters represented by the symbol theta. Alongside this, we have a training dataset, which we'll refer to as D. This dataset consists of multiple data points, say, D1, D2 and so on up to dn. In addition, we have a function that computes the loss or the discrepancy between the model's predictions and the actual data. We'll refer to this function as L. Now, suppose we want to update our model using SGD. To illustrate this, let's use a batch with two data points. The formula for this update would involve subtracting from our existing parameters, theta, the product of a learning rate, alpha and the sum of the gradients, which is a fancy term for rate of change, of our loss function computed at the two data points. But, what if we updated our model in two steps, processing each of the two training samples one after the other instead of simultaneously? This process involves similar calculations, but now the update at each step takes into account the previous state of our parameters. Now, this is where mathematics becomes particularly handy. Using the differential mean value theorem, we can express the change in the loss function after the first step in terms of a certain parameter, which we will denote as xi. This parameter is essentially a hypothetical value that lies between our model's predictions for the second data point, computed before and after the first update step. This allows us to write a more complex formula for our two-step update, where additional terms appear that involve the changes in our model's predictions and the gradient of our loss function at this hypothetical value xi. Here's the interesting part. If the loss surface, or the mathematical space that represents our loss function, is smooth enough, the additional terms we just discussed can become insignificant. In practical terms, this means that a single update step with a larger batch of data can closely mimic several update steps with smaller batches. Hence, the term, implicit batch size. Given that we can reasonably assume the loss surface of LLMs to be smooth, this property suggests that fine-tuning LLMs with the SGD method could imply a larger batch size, which in turn indicates stronger training stability. This can provide an explanation as to why SGD tends to fail on smaller models but succeeds with larger ones. Section Summary The stability of fine-tuning LLMs with SGD was analyzed by considering a pre-trained model, a training set, and a loss function. The analysis showed that utilizing SGD optimizer over a smooth loss surface could imply a larger batch size, which indicates stronger training stability. Therefore, the fine-tuning process of LLMs with the SGD optimizer is stable and this explains why SGD failed on small models but worked for large models. Section 
3.2 LOMO, Low Memory Optimization. The section 3.2 discusses low memory optimization, LOMO, a new method we have developed to address the high memory usage often found in modern deep learning training frameworks such as PyTorch. These frameworks typically store gradient tensors, representations of how much a parameter affects the overall model performance, for all parameters. This can take up a substantial amount of memory, particularly given that these tensors are usually the same size as their associated parameters. There are typically two reasons why we store gradient tensors. First, to compute the states of an optimizer, which is essentially an algorithm that adjusts parameters to improve the model, and second, to normalize, or standardize, gradients. In this paper, however, we focus on stochastic gradient descent, SGD, as our optimizer of choice, and this doesn't require the storage of gradient tensors. Furthermore, we have identified alternative methods for normalizing gradients. Our solution to the memory issue is the introduction of LOMO. The fundamental concept behind LOMO is to streamline the process of computing gradients and updating parameters by doing both in one go, thereby eliminating the need to store any gradient tensors. In a conventional approach, the computation of the gradient and the update of the parameter are separate steps. In mathematical terms, this would look like first calculating the gradient, represented as grad, which equals the derivative of the loss function L with respect to the parameter page next, the parameter is updated by subtracting the product of the learning rate, LR, and the gradient from the original parameter. In contrast, the LOMO approach fuses these two steps. We update the parameter by subtracting the product of the learning rate and the derivative of the loss function with respect to the parameter, all in one step. How do we achieve this? By incorporating special functions, known as hook functions, into the backward propagation, the process by which the model learns from its errors. We should, however, adjust these hook functions as needed if certain parameters share the same weight. Although PyTorch offers the necessary APIs for injecting hook functions, we found that the existing APIs don't allow us to implement the immediate update exactly. Instead, our solution was to store the gradient of only one parameter at a time in memory, and to update each parameter one by one during backward propagation. This modification significantly reduces the memory used for storing gradients, taking it from needing to store the gradients of all parameters to needing to store only one. The majority of the memory use in our LOMO method is on par with that of parameter-efficient fine-tuning, PEFT, methods. This implies that combining LOMO with PEFT methods results in only a minor increase in the memory used for gradients, and allows us to fine-tune more parameters using PEFT methods. Section Summary The LOMO Low memory optimization algorithm proposes a way to reduce the memory overhead of storing gradient tensors during deep learning training. By fusing the gradient computation and parameter update in one step, LOMO avoids storing any gradient tensors in memory. This approach reduces the memory usage of gradients from storing all parameters gradients to storing only one parameters gradient, making it compatible with parameter efficient fine tuning (PEFT) methods. Section 3.3.1 Alternatives to Gradient Normalization and Clipping. In this section titled, 3.3.1 Alternatives to Gradient Normalization and Clipping, we are considering different ways to manage the challenges associated with gradient explosion and vanishing, which currently require the use of all parameters gradient tensors in the computational process. We propose two alternative methods, 1. Trimming the gradient tensors according to their individual values, instead of using the overall norm. 2. Performing an additional pass to calculate the gradient norm. Our first proposal is a straightforward but efficient way to tackle the issue of gradient explosion before it even occurs in the gradient norm. The challenge here, however, is that by trimming certain elements of the gradient, we might unintentionally alter the direction of the gradient tensor. For instance, the two-dimensional vector, 1.3, 0 0.8, if trimmed to 1.0, 0 0.8, clipped to 1.0, would change directions. In our experience, this trimming method tends to underperform when the learning rate is high because this leads to more frequent trimming. But, when applied to medium and small learning rates, this method can be very effective. The appropriate scale for the learning rate largely varies with the task and data at hand, but as a general guideline, we suggest using value-based trimming for learning rates less than 0.001. The second approach we suggest involves an additional computational step to evaluate and accumulate each parameter's gradient norm. This process does not directly calculate the gradient norm since we update parameters in tandem with the backpropagation, which leaves us without the norm of the remaining parameters when updating a certain one. Consequently, we need to implement two backward passes, the first one to calculate the gradient norm, and the second one for updating parameters. While this method doesn't increase memory usage, it does slow down the overall process due to the additional computational pass. Section Summary 
The section proposes two alternatives to gradient normalization and clipping. Clipping gradient tensors by their values rather than the norm, and computing the gradient norm in an additional pass. Clipping by values is effective for gradient explosion before gradient norm approaches, but may change the direction of the gradient tensor. Clipping by values performs well for medium and small learning rates, while computing the gradient norm in an additional pass sacrifices speed but leaves memory usage unchanged. Section. A controversial solution. In the sphere of our current training model, we determine the gradient norm using all parameters which involves executing two backward passes. To conserve the need for an additional backward pass, one method we've considered involves estimating the gradient tensor's norm using a subset of parameters, such as those from neighboring layers. However, there is a clear bias inherent to this approach. The bias arises due to the fact that different parameters will have different update step sizes. During updates, the parameters are adjusted by a scaling factor that's determined by their respective gradient norms. Since these gradient norms vary among different groups of parameters, using such an approximation results in unequal scaling factors. This bias notwithstanding, the method of grouping gradient clipping can be viewed as assigning dynamic learning rates to different parameter groups, based on the norms of their gradients. The variability of learning rates corresponds to the principle that it may not always be optimal to apply the same learning rate to all parameters within stochastic gradient descent, SGD. Therefore, we posit that our method might enhance SGD further. Exploring this possibility is an intriguing direction for future research, and we're eager to delve into it. Section Summary. The current training framework requires two backward passes to compute the gradient norm based on all parameters. An alternative solution is to approximate the norm of gradient tensors with a group of parameters, but this method is biased and results in different update step sizes for different parameters. Despite this limitation, the grouped gradient clipping method can be considered as applying a dynamic learning rate to different groups of parameters based on their gradient norms, which suggests that it is not always appropriate to use the same learning rate for all parameters in SGD. Section 3.3.2 Mitigating Precision Degradation To speed up the training process, mixed precision training is often used. However, this approach can sometimes lead to a decrease in precision. To counteract this, we employ a couple of techniques, dynamic loss scaling and selective use of full precision computations. Dynamic loss scaling is key to avoid underflows when training with 16-bit floating point numbers, or FP16. This method involves magnifying the loss by a certain factor before the backward pass, then reducing the gradients by the same factor. In our work, we integrate this dynamic loss scaling approach with our model, LOMO, adjusting the scaling factor as needed during the training process. Here's how it works. If we don't experience an overflow after a certain number of backward passes, we double the scaling factor. However, if an overflow does occur, we skip this doubling step and instead have the scaling factor. This technique mirrors the challenges faced during gradient normalization. We don't know whether an overflow will occur until after we've completed the backward pass. As a result, we conduct two backward passes. The first pass allows us to detect any overflows. If no overflow is found, we then proceed with the second pass, where we update the model parameters. These dual backward passes for dynamic loss scaling can run concurrently with the process of gradient normalization. Furthermore, for certain operations like normalization and scaling that require precise updates to parameters and gradients, we switch to full precision. This means we convert the gradient and its related parameter to full precision within these specific calculations, providing us with the accuracy we need. Section Summary The use of mixed precision training can speed up the training process, but it can lead to precision degradation. To address this issue, the authors utilize dynamic loss scaling and transition certain computations to full precision. They integrate a dynamic loss scaler with LOMO, which adjusts the scaling factor throughout the training procedure, and perform two backward passes to identify any overflow and update the parameters if no overflow is detected. Section 4 Experiment In this part of our research, we focus on assessing our suggested method using three different criteria, the memory footprint, processing speed, and the overall effectiveness of the system. Unless mentioned otherwise, all our tests use LAMA models, with capacities varying from 7 billion to 65 billion parameters. Firstly, we examine the memory utilization of the model states and activations during the training process under various configurations. Based on the data shown in the table, the LOMO optimizer significantly reduces the memory footprint compared to both the ADAMW and SGD optimizers. Specifically, Memory usage drops from 102.20 GB to 14.58 GB when switching from ADAMW to LOMO, 
and from 51.99 GB to 14.58 GB when replacing SGD with LOMO during the training of the LAMA 7B model. This substantial reduction in memory usage is mainly due to the decreased memory needs of the gradient and optimizer states. Consequently, memory is mostly taken up by parameters in the training process, aligning with memory usage during inference. When using the Atom W optimizer for LAMA 7B training, a setup that is commonly used, we observe that a significant portion of memory, 73.7%, is dedicated to the optimizer states. This is an effect of the mixed precision training technique, in which full precision copies of weights, momentum, and variance are kept within the optimizer states for weight updates. By substituting the Atom W optimizer with the SGD optimizer, the portion of memory used for optimizer states decreases significantly, thereby lessening the load on the GPU memory from 102.20 GB to 51.99 GB. The SGD optimizer does not require the storage of full precision momentum and variance, which accounts for this reduction. The LOMO optimizer goes a step further by merging parameter updates and backward passes into a single operation, thus eliminating the necessity for optimizer state memory altogether. Section Summary The proposed LOMO optimizer significantly reduces memory usage during training of LAMA models, resulting in a decrease from 102.20 GB to 14.58 GB compared to Atom W and from 51.99 GB to 14.58 GB compared to SGD. The reduction is mainly due to the decreased memory requirements of the gradient and optimizer states, with memory mostly occupied by parameters during training and inference. Replacing Atom W with SGD can also reduce memory usage by eliminating the need for full precision momentums and variances. Section. Gradients. Gradients and activations during the training process using LOMO, we immediately update parameters as soon as we receive gradients, and then we discard these gradients from our memory. This means that the most memory we'll ever use for storing gradients is determined by the gradient linked with the parameter matrix that has the largest size. By doing this, we significantly reduce memory usage, approximately by the size of the parameters. Training a model with 7 billion parameters and a batch size of 4096 tokens can require a lot of memory for activations. However, LOMO works well with techniques like activation checkpointing that are designed to reduce the memory required for activations. When we combine LOMO with activation checkpointing, we can cut down the memory needed for activations from around 45.61 GB to just 1.79 GB. Throughput We also measured how efficient LOMO is in terms of throughput and compared it with other optimization methods like Atom W and SGD. We conducted these experiments on a server that has 8 RTX 3090 GPUs, all connected via PCIe motherboard. The sequence length and batch size were set to 1024 and 1 respectively. We evaluated throughput by counting how many tokens each GPU could process every second, TGS, and used 03 to partition parameters. For the 7 billion parameter model, LOMO showed remarkable throughput, processing about 11 times as many tokens per second as Atom W and SGD. This can be largely attributed to LOMO's ability to train the 7 billion parameter model using just one GPU, which cuts down on the time and resources spent on inter-GPU communication. The slightly higher throughput of SGD when compared to Atom W is due to the fact that SGD doesn't calculate momentum and variance. For the 13 billion parameter model, we could not use Atom W to train it on the 8 RTX 3090 GPUs available due to memory restrictions. In this case, even though we needed to use model parallelism for LOMO, LOMO still had a higher throughput than SGD. This benefit is due to LOMO's efficient memory use and the need for only two GPUs to train the model with the same settings. This leads to lower communication costs and higher throughput. Moreover, when we tried to train the 30 billion parameter model, SGD ran into out-of-memory issues on the 8 RTX 3090 GPUs, whereas LOMO performed well with only four GPUs. Finally, we successfully trained a 65 billion parameter model using 8 RTX 3090 GPUs, achieving a throughput of 4.93 TGS. With a server setup like this in LOMO, training on 1000 samples, each containing 512 tokens, takes roughly 3.6 hours. Section Summary The LOMO approach reduces memory usage during training by immediately updating parameters upon receiving gradients and discarding them from memory. It is compatible with activation memory reduction techniques and achieves remarkable throughput, surpassing Atom W and SGD by about 11 times for the 7B model. LOMO's memory-efficient properties allow for successful training of larger models with fewer GPUs, resulting in reduced communication costs and greater throughput. Section 4.3 Downstream Performance In Section 4.3, titled, Downstream Performance, 
we aim to gauge the effectiveness of a method called LOMO in fine-tuning substantial language models through a wide range of experiments. We place LOMO in comparison with two other techniques, one known as SHOT, which doesn't necessitate any fine-tuning, and another called LORA, presently one of the most utilized approaches for efficient fine-tuning. LORA, as explained in the reference literature, reconfigures the densely layered matrices and only makes updates to the low-rank matrices, without adding any delay during the inference process. We apply the SuperGlue dataset collection to assess our model's performance, particularly focusing on tasks such as RTE, BOOL-Q, WSC, WIC, MultiRC, and COPA. Due to the considerable computational resources required to run large language models, we adopt the approach used by Mezzo, which involves randomly selecting 1,000 training data points from the training set and 1,000 test data points from the validation set. We then report the best results we achieve using the same randomly generated seed. We conduct our experiments using the same prompts as Mezzo, and the hyperparameters are thoroughly explained in appendix. During the inference process, we insert different labels or candidates into the prompt and compute the average log likelihood for each label. We choose the label with the highest score as the model's response. To measure performance, we use accuracy as our evaluation metric. Section Summary The effectiveness of LOMO in fine-tuning large language models is evaluated through experiments comparing it to SHOT and LORA. The SuperGlue dataset collection is used to evaluate model performance, with a focus on RTE, BOOL-Q, WSC, WIC, MultiRC, and COPA. The evaluation metric used is accuracy, and the best results obtained using the same random seed are reported. Section 4.3.1 4.3.1 Main Results We've conducted comprehensive tests to compare the performance of LOMO with SHOT and LORA. Our findings, as detailed in the corresponding table, indicate a few noteworthy points. Firstly, LOMO considerably outperforms SHOT across a wide range of datasets and different model sizes. For example, when utilizing LAMA 13 b we observed a substantial improvement in performance, with LOMO surpassing SHOT by more than 20 points on average. This is significant, considering how previous studies have lauded the effectiveness of large language models in zero-shot settings. However, our research indicates that fine-tuning these models can yield even greater improvements in performance for specific tasks. The empirical evidence from our experiments validates the potency of LOMO in optimizing large language models of various scales. Secondly, our study shows that LOMO typically surpasses LORA in performance in most of our trials. To put it in numbers, we found an average performance improvement of 2.8 points when using LAMA 13b with LOMO compared to LORA. This outcome implies that full parameter fine tuning, which adjusts a larger number of parameters, provides a greater boost to the model's performance than parameter efficient fine tuning. In essence, LOMO finds a sweet spot between performance and efficiency, proving to be a strong contender for fine tuning. That being said, it's important to note that there were instances where LORA outperformed LOMO. One possible explanation could be the relatively small size of the training set used in our experiments. A larger training set might be needed to fully harness the potential of large-scale models. Moreover, LoRa and LOMO utilize different model architectures. LoRa, in particular, provides a tuning shortcut that can be beneficial in certain situations. Interestingly, these two methods aren't in conflict and can be combined. In the following section, we will demonstrate that integrating LoRa with LOMO doesn't degrade the model's performance. In fact, in most cases, it leads to performance improvements. Lastly, our experiments show that LOMO is highly scalable, capable of optimizing models with up to 65 billion parameters. Despite running all our experiments on a single machine equipped with 8 RTX 3090 graphics cards, LOMO continued to deliver strong performance even with models of this scale. This result further attests to LOMO's effectiveness in optimizing large language models under resource-constrained situations. Section Summary The LOMO method outperforms SHOT and generally outperforms LoRa in optimizing large language models of different sizes, with average gains of more than 20 points using LAMA 13b. However, in some cases, LOMO performs worse than LoRa, possibly due to the relatively small training set used or the different model architectures employed. Combining LoRa with LOMO does not harm model performance and, in most cases, leads to performance gains. LOMO efficiently scales up to 65 billion parameter models, making it effective in optimizing LLMs under resource-constrained scenarios. Section 4.3.2 LoRa with LOMO We've explored the interaction between two techniques, namely LOMO and LoRa, which are essentially independent. To validate this, we've conducted tests using a tool called LAMA 13b, 
applied to datasets known as BOOL-Q and multi-RC. The outcomes of our investigation are visually represented in a figure. Our observations indicate that, irrespective of the already enhanced results obtained by LoRa, LOMO consistently boosts LoRa's performance. This insinuates that the fine-tuning methods employed by both LOMO and LoRa work in harmony, complementing each other. More specifically, LOMO targets the fine-tuning of the initial weights of pre-trained models, while LoRa adjusts auxiliary modules. This means that LOMO doesn't detract from LoRa's performance. On the contrary, it aids in refining the model tuning process for the subsequent tasks, effectively improving the results. Section Summary Experiments using LAMA 13 b on the BOOL-Q and multi-RC datasets show that LOMO and LoRa are independent of each other and that LOMO consistently enhances the performance of LoRa. The different fine-tuning methods employed by LOMO and LoRa are complementary, with LOMO focusing on fine-tuning the pre-trained model weights and LoRa tuning additional modules, facilitating better model tuning for downstream tasks.